Okay. Um, uh, hi, everyone. So uh, let me remind you where we were last time. I was uh, introducing uh, commitments and trapdoor commitments. And um, uh, in order to use them, uh, they, they are generally useful things, but uh, we will in particular use them in zero knowledge uh, protocols. So a commitment scheme uh, is a triple of algorithms, uh, generate parameters, commit, and open, um, with the caveat that uh, these uh, two algorithms could be uh, created by, operated by one entity, and in a non-interactive way, he creates, uh, the, the, the committer creates some quote-unquote parameters and then commits using them. Um, and a procedure to open, and uh, the semantics is that if you commit to a message, uh, this message should be hidden. Uh, so the commitment is hiding if the commitments to one message are indistinguishable from commitments to another uh, for randomly chosen uh, parameters. Uh, uh, and it's binding if it's hard, given the parameters, to create a commitment with two different decommitments. And uh, we have seen Pedersen commitments, very simple scheme, which has perfect hiding and binding is based on discrete logarithm hardness. But um, this very commitment scheme has also um, some other properties which would um, be useful in, uh, in applications. It's a trapdoor commitment in the sense that there is a way to generate parameters together with a trapdoor. And then uh, to use that trapdoor to fake commit, uh, issue quote uh, fake commitments, which are not committing to anything. Uh, but given uh, an accompanying trapdoor, once you know what you want to decommit this fake commitment to, you can do so. Okay, you can compute efficiently. Uh, the commitments, the decommitments, the opening for any message. So these are threshold tra uh, trapdoor parameter generation, trapdoor commitment, and trapdoor open. And in the case of Pedersen uh, commitments, these were indeed very simple, right? If uh, the parameters of the commitments are G and H, and binding, uh, breaking binding is so. Commitment commitments are perfectly hiding, uh, and binding is, is subject to discrete logarithm. Then the trapdoor uh, uh, generation simply knows that discrete logarithm between the two the parameters g and h, and it can take commit like so, and then given uh, whatever message target message it can decommit to it uh, by uh, because it knows all the discrete logarithms so it can solve. Uh, for the proper decommitment uh, using uh, linear equations. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so he, here's, uh, okay, I should have checked the name uh, before, but um, now I'm, I'm blanking on uh, who came up with this, um, uh, sorry. So, uh, uh, trapdoor mm, commitment and a sigma protocol uh, give us a zero knowledge uh, proof in uh, uh, CRS um, for the same language. Okay. So, uh, let's say a sigma protocol. Uh, for L, for L, uh, for L. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a sigma protocol for L is a, a prover uh, algorithm. Uh, th this one creates a uh, the first uh, message. This one creates a response uh, at the randomness of the verifier and the verifier algorithm, right? So the syntax is 
v1 xw output this first first message uh, then uh, the challenge is chosen at random from uh, the randomness space and then uh, p2 on x w uh, ah, uh, okay and we need uh, randomness of the prover uh, also here uh, given the randomness of the prover outputs uh, the response and the verifier on x a c z uh, outputs uh, accept or reject okay and um okay so now uh, and this is an honest verifier uh, hvzk uh, with uh, special uh, zk and uh, and soundness properties okay so um uh, we should uh, bring them back uh, just recall what they are so special zero knowledge means that uh, simulator on x and c um, outputs a z which is this is distributed in the same way as what uh, the real real prover uh, would do uh, given uh, this um, uh, this challenge right so this distribution uh, it's uh, actually identical to this one for every x in the language and every challenge um, in the randomness space of the verifier okay and um, so that was the special HPZK property and special soundness was that uh, uh, if whenever you have um, uh, X, A and two transcripts, C1, Z1 and uh, C2, Z2 uh, such that the challenges are not equal uh, but uh, uh, but uh, the verification algorithm on X, A, C1, Z1 and the verification algorithm on X, A, C2, Z2 all accept, then that means X is in the language. Okay, uh, that was the special soundness. Okay. So let's um, let's see how this uh, proof system um, uh, would work. Uh, the prover, uh, so it's a proof system in a CRS. Uh, so uh, uh, here is the zero knowledge proof system uh, for L in a CRS. Uh, it has um, an algorithm to uh, generate parameters and an algorithm for the prover and an algorithm for the verifier. Okay. Uh, uh, the public generation, uh, the generation of the parameters um, is the, um, uh, is the uh, public generation of the uh, um, uh, of the so the uh, of the commitment scheme. So you uh, the parameters in the CRS is the parameters of the commitment are the parameters on uh, in the commitment. Okay, so um, so um, uh, let pi uh, be these parameters uh, generated for. Uh, uh, the proper security parameter um, and uh, now the prover uh, on x uh, and w but the prover now has these parameters um, he uh, does the following he runs the uh, mm, underlying uh, sigma protocol verif uh, prover on uh, xw and um, and 
uh, randomness uh, to generate uh, the first message and then uh, runs the commitment scheme on the first message to create commitment and db commitment and he sends uh, the commitment which i will have to uh, denote with a capital c uh, uh, to the verifier uh, the verifier uh, sends a challenge uh, chosen for the for the honest verifier uh, it is chosen at random from the uh, randomness space um, the difference will be that this is a full zero knowledge uh, proof system so we will argue security for verifiers which choose this challenge in some other way okay in arbitrary way not necessarily choosing them but the honest but the the standard verification procedure is to choose this challenge at random. And uh, in response, uh, the prover runs uh, uh, the uh, Sigma protocol to create a response, right? So given X, W, and the challenge C, and, uh, and the randomness RP, uh, uh, generate the response, uh, but I also uh, decommit uh, this initial commitment, and um, uh, in our syntax, the decommitment didn't include the message to which you decommit itself. So I'm going to add it. Okay. So, uh, so in other words, this is the response from the Sigma protocol. This is the first message that was supposed to be sent here, but was replaced by a commitment to it. And this is the opening of that commitment to this message. And the verifier checks uh, accept if and only if, first of all, open uh, of uh, this first commitment uh, with this with commitment and this uh, uh, message mm, accepted. Okay, so indeed, uh, this was a proper opening of this commitment to this. And uh, secondly, uh, the underlying uh, verifier of the uh, of the uh, underlying Sigma protocol uh, on uh, this statement and uh, the triple, the first message, the challenge, and the response also accepted. Okay. What is the okay? So, what's the intuition? Um, what was the issue? Okay, so let's see. Is it uh, binding? Is it sound? Because what have we done? We have uh, made it in the original protocol, in the underlying Sigma protocol. The prover sent his first message, which unfortunately is also referred to as commitment. So let's now refer to this first message in the uh, HVCK as just Prover's first message. So here he was sending this Prover's first message, and now he is sending um, just a commitment to it. So uh, now, if the commitment, just think first that the commitment is perfectly binding, not based on any assumption, like discrete logarithm for a Pedersen commitment, but perfectly, uh, then well, then any algorithm P uh, is whenever they send something here, if they can open it at all, there is a single message that they can open uh, this commitment to, uh, which would mean that uh, that this single message was committed at this point, and by strong soundness of the HVZK. 
if the statement is wrong, uh, and this message, first message of the prover is fixed, uh, then um, if the statement is wrong, then there exists a single C uh, for which the response C exists, right? Because there, if there exists two, then X must be in the language. So again, the soundness argument will work uh, 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 so for the case of perfectly binding uh, commitment, the sound this the soundness uh, uh, goes through uh, the same as before. Uh, but we have computationally binding commitment in this case. Uh, right? So a cheating prover, uh, you know, can uh, break um, a prover that can solve discrete logarithm um, given um, uh, the parameters. Let's say the prover solves the discrete logarithm, breaks the assumption uh, under which this trapdoor commitment is binding. And uh, and then soundness does not hold, right? Because if they know discrete logarithm, then they can use um, uh, this scheme to fake commit in the first message, and then um, use the simulator to come up with, uh, use the uh, special simulator, given the challenge, um, they can create a first message and response pair which looks as if it's, distri it's distributed the same way as the honest prover would, as it would be for the honest prover. And then they would use the fake uh, open uh, to open to this uh, simulated first message uh, in here, right? Indeed, that's exactly how the simulation for this protocol is going to work. So that cheating, Prover strategy uh, is indeed the simulator strategy, uh, which shows that this proof system is uh, zero knowledge against an arbitrary verifier. So, okay, but what about this uh, cheating prover strategy, right? Well, uh, that cheating strategy works under the assumption that the cheating provers breaks um, uh, the assumption under which this trapdoor commitment is binding. So hopefully we will reduce, uh, we can reduce uh, 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 existence of such a prover to an attack on uh, binding property of the commitment. Okay. Um, right. So that is that is that that is the goal. But uh, but let me first uh, correct something that uh, I said here because uh, it is clear that um, soundness of this proof proof system is not unconditional. It is. Uh, it can only be conditional on uh, discrete on on the whatever assumptions were used uh, for the binding of this commitment. Um, now, if uh, when I talked about the commitment, I said that uh, they can you can have commitments which are perfect perfectly hiding, like this Pedersen one, where commitments. Uh, which look like this, right, are distributed identically uh, no matter what message you're committing to. In the Pedersen case, uh, all random group elements, uh, so in particular commitment to M, are identical to commitment to M prime or any M M prime. Uh, but um, this commitment is only computationally binding. You can have a flip of this. You can also have commitments which are perfectly binding, uh, but they are. Uh, but then they are 
computationally uh, hiding. Uh, so, uh, maybe um, um, let's uh, so, so Pedersen uh, commitment is uh, uh, perfectly hiding uh, uh, computationally uh, binding uh, based on uh, the discrete log assumption. Uh, now, um, CPA secure uh, public key encryption uh, gives you uh, computationally hiding um, uh, commitment, uh, but perfectly uh, binding. How? The parameters is the public key. Uh, the commitment is an encryption under the public key of a message uh, using some randomness. And the decommitment is the randomness and to verify a proper opening given commitment, decommitment, and the message uh, that you're decommitting to, the verifier simply recomputes the encryption in a forward direction and checks. Okay. Why is it computationally hiding? Well, what is the commitment? It's an encryption. And uh, the parameters are the public key. So by uh, semantic security of encryption, encryption uh, C is generated for any M0 are indistinguishable for, from ciphertext generated for any M1. Uh, and why is it perfectly binding? Well, so that uh, uses, okay, you can have an encryption where, which is colliding. So, there exist ciphertexts such that these ciphertexts are actually encryptions of two different messages under the same public key. Uh, but uh, it's, it is, uh, these are non-standard, right? So basically this, this requires uh, some extra property, which all known, uh, you know, which known all standard encryption schemes have which is that uh, that, uh, that this is a um, invert one-to-one uh, -one function. Encryption is a one-to-one -one function. So no two messages exist whose encryptions uh, collide into a same ciphertext, right? Because that would be an ambiguous uh, uh, encryption. You can have that if this is a negligible property event right, uh, then in practice you don't care that with negligible probability someone uh, gets a collision in encryption. Uh, that property would, however, break the binding here. Uh, okay. Um, now, if a commitment is a trapdoor commitment, so then it cannot be perfectly binding, right, because uh, for um, perfect binding means that um, for every commitment there exists a single uh, decommitment. Okay, so regardless of uh, whatever trapdoors uh, uh, the simulator, the trapdoor commitment. Uh, uh, party generates, uh, okay, uh, there simply exists no uh, two ways to decommit uh, to a single uh, uh, commitment. And indeed, you cannot have mm, trapdoor commitments here, right? So even if you use the secret key, it doesn't help you. Uh, okay. So uh, if you don't consider trapdoor commitments, you can still ask 
uh, well, we have examples for uh, this type of commitments. We have examples for these. Could you, could you have uh, perfect security on both sides? And um, it's not a hard argument that you can't. Um, you cannot achieve uh, both properties at the same time. Okay. Um, so, okay, coming back here, um, let's 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 therefore uh, show both uh, both arguments. Um, okay, maybe. Um, So now that I have the protocol skirt here, uh, um, so um, here is a proof of uh, uh, zero knowledge. Well, let's give a simulator. Uh, so a simulator uh, uh, first runs a trapdoor uh, PG. Uh, to create a PAR together with the trapdoor, uh, which uh, I denoted this way. Okay, uh, then, um, then, um, so, uh, okay, then um, I would denote the first simulator that could generate the parameters using the same. Um, Acronym as the simulator that then uses this trapdoor uh, to simulate every instance of of this proof system. So, uh, given a, a statement and the trapdoor, uh, well, as you might have guessed, he runs the uh, 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 runs a trapdoor commit. Um, on um, uh, using this trapdoor uh, to generate the fake commitment and the uh, trapdoor uh, that allows opening this commitment to an arbitrary message. Um, then given uh, the uh, challenge uh, C, uh, output by an arbitrary verifier on input, the statement, and this first message, right? So the simulator is going to send this commitment to the verifier and just uh, take whatever challenge the verifier uh, responds. So, so this, because it's a zero knowledge, it works uh, it's supposed to work for any uh, efficient verifier V star. And so given that challenge, uh, he runs the trapdoor opening. So first of all, he runs the underlying Sigma protocol uh, simulator on X and this challenge uh, to generate an AZ. And uh, then uh, uh, runs the uh, trapdoor opening um, using uh, this uh, commitment, this fake commitment it created um, here. So, uh, and uh, sends uh, C uh, to V star, right? And then opens uh, this fake commitment uh, using the trapdoor uh, to the message that uh, that the simulator asked for. Okay, and this is the uh, the D, and then sends um, uh, the simulated response from the HVCK. Uh, the the trapdoor opening, uh, the, the commitment D, and uh, 
uh, and the message A that it was um, supposedly opening at this point uh, to V star. Now, if the um, the distribution so trapdoor commitments. Uh, well, these trapdoor commitments were sort of perfect in the sense that the parameters they created were in this, were identical, identically distributed to the honestly generated ones. The fake commitments they generated were perfectly uh, identi were identical to the honest ones, and so were the decommitments. So. If you have trapped or commitments that are as powerful as this, uh, then this is distributed identically to the honest, uh, to the view of the, that the V star would get uh, with, a, uh, with an honest prover. Because, uh, and that's also by the um, special. Uh, HVCK property of the proof system of the of the Sigma protocol, right? So, uh, so the the argument is not a reduction. Uh, everything here is information theoretic distributed the same way as in the as in the underlying proof, and. Uh, no, the very strong and and basically uh, the whole thing is in this in the fact that the verifier uh, basically uh, give uh, pi uh, to v star, right? So the uh, if you We didn't properly define what is a zero knowledge in CRS, uh, but the zero knowledge in CRS is that there exists a simulation. A simulator it can generate a parameter CRS together with a trapdoor. It announces the CRS to the world, including cheating verifiers. And then for every X in the language, uh, the simulator, uh, given that, uh, that X and the trapdoor, can generate uh, transcripts uh, which are indistinguishable from uh, uh, what an honest prover uh, would output uh, given the witness. Right? So uh, the Standard notion of zero knowledge does not have uh, this first part. Okay, and uh, we are introducing this part when we talk about zero knowledge in a, a common reference string model. And now, surprisingly, this is a much more powerful for the uh, so it allows simulation of protocols in a Right, in a we, for example, in a standard model, we do not know. So, not the that we don't know. We have arguments which show that three round zero knowledge is impossible or very, very unlikely. Actually, impossible to argue in a black box way for um, uh, non trivial languages. Okay, so uh, whereas in the CRS, when you can generate, uh, you know, these public parameters in the real world by some honest third party who everybody trusts, uh, and in the simulation by um, by a simulator who generates these parameters together with a trapdoor that allow universal simulation for all statements. OK, um, so that's that's what's happening here. And um, that's why you have 
uh, suddenly you are able uh, to to deal with uh, arbitrary verifiers. Okay. Um, okay. Now coming back uh, to uh, to the soundness property. As this uh, teaching verifiers, uh, this simulation strategy corresponds to a possible uh, teaching prover who, uh, on uh, so soundness in a C, uh, for a C, uh, zero knowledge for a proof system in a CRS, likewise, uh, the prover, uh, even a teaching prover, we will assume that the parameters are chosen honestly. Okay, and the cheating prover can now do an arbitrary stuff, but he has to do it for the parameters that were honestly chosen. If the parameters were chosen in a dishonest way, you would have no hope for binding, right? Like the, for the soundness of this proof system. In fact, it would be explicitly broken. Parameters are chosen in the structured way, indeed allow uh, uh, this proof system to go through not just for statements in the language for which you can make this thing, but the verifier would accept even for statements not in the language, right? If they're just produced by the simulator, uh, like so. Um, this uh, also means that this is actually not a zero knowledge uh, proof. Uh, but it is, uh, uh, sorry, 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 I crossed out the, the wrong letter. Uh, it's not, it's a zero knowledge argument. Um, uh, for this language L in CRS. And um, an argument, um, it's um, uh, like a zero knowledge proof. Uh, but soundness uh, only uh, guaranteed uh, against uh, efficient provers, uh, cheating provers. Okay. Uh, because uh, Right. If you have a cheating prover who breaks the screen logarithm, uh, that prover can use the, the trapdoor uh, simulation, uh, the simulation procedure, and uh, regardless of whether statement is in the language or not, and it will be accepted. Okay. Uh, in uh, practice, this doesn't really uh, matter that the, 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 you know whether the proof system is an argument or a proof, uh, uh, because you know if we have if we are facing uh, super polynomial time attackers, a lot of other things uh, break anyway. Uh, but this would ma will matter if you are using uh, a zero knowledge proof system in as a part of some uh, larger protocol, and you're arguing about security. It might be helpful if the z if the zero knowledge part is uh, has stronger guarantees. It might be helpful for an ar for some uh, arguments, right? As we've seen many times, stronger properties of a building blocks of a building block uh, enable uh, e e make it easier uh, for them to be used and uh, and argue that they, that they uh, imply security of uh, some uh, higher level application. Okay, so let's see if um, if the um, what about the binding of this uh, of this proof system? Uh, so here is the here is the proof system. 
and we argued zero knowledge. So uh, our uh, uh, block that part. Um, and okay, so what about uh, the uh, proof um, of soundness? Um, okay, so just like we drew this picture of what is zero knowledge, so this, by the way, is a, a zero knowledge in uh, CRS, uh, right? And uh, and uh, I hope uh, you're okay if I just sketch it essentially, right? And not not give a, a formal um, uh, definition. Uh, so, uh, uh, so what is soundness? Uh, soundness uh, of a proof system in uh, uh, CRS says that uh, uh, for every efficient uh, uh, P star, uh, the pro uh, and for every uh, well. Uh, well, let's say um, uh, at first this, uh, that for every x not in the language, uh, the probability uh, that uh, uh, p star uh, uh, that the conversation between P star and V on X, uh, uh, and we don't care about the prover's output, uh, but uh, it leads the verifier to accept. Uh, but this conversation is happening after the parameters are chosen uh, uh, by some trusted entity. And therefore, um, sorry, uh, I have to give them as inputs. So uh, P star uh, has the parameter pi and the statement, and it interacts with the verifier who also runs on the same parameters and the statement. And um, we don't care about the proper's output, but we uh, want to. Uh, uh, look at the, such interactions which lead the verifier to output accept. And this is all happening after uh, parameters were randomly chosen uh, by the trusted parameter generation procedure. And all of this uh, should be negligible, uh, uh, right, in the, in the security parameter. Uh, and uh, the, the, the run, the randomness goes over the randomness of this interaction, right? So the well, so there are three sources of randomness: the randomness of the public of the parameter generation, randomness of the verifier, and uh, this is the randomized algorithm as well. So that's what the probability goes over. Uh, so uh, to contrast with this picture. Uh, we have uh, a public key gener parameter generation that generates uh, the parameters. They are given uh, to uh, P star, and and uh, and then uh, okay. And if uh, the same uh, P star uh, parameters verify runs on the same parameters, uh, we want to. Uh, argue that that this system outputs one that for all x not in the language uh, this game uh, will output uh, one uh, with a negligible uh, probability. But again, the advantage given by the CRS is that just like in a zero knowledge case, 
the cheating very well could cheat, but he uh, was getting the prover, uh, the, uh, the parameters uh, as well uh, as an input. And uh, these parameters during this simulation perhaps were chosen in a special way. Uh, the cheating prover here will also have to work for the parameters with respect to the parameters which are generated by a process that the cheating prover does not control. Um, uh, because um, the um, let me say this correctly. So, the parameters are generated presumably, uh, you know, at the beginning of time, which is when, say, a proof system based uh, on on this, uh, on this scheme uh, would be part of some standardized uh, procedure that everybody uses. Okay, so. Uh, at that point, uh, some process has to generate these reference strings. But uh, that presumably happens once, right? And and then the world uh, takes its uh, uh, takes its run, and uh, all sorts of applications are developed for this uh, using these zero knowledge proof systems. And as part of these applications, um, statements come. Right, uh, people are given uh, network messages for which uh, that, that they will trust based on uh, proof systems, uh, zero knowledge proof systems that accompanies uh, these messages. Okay, like so, for example, these messages are encryptions, and the proof system shows that these are encryptions of valid stuff or. These messages are some other uh, protocol messages, and and the proof system will testify that they, these protocol messages are generated correctly. Uh, so statements uh, would be in the real world would be perhaps functions of these parameters. Why does this matter? Because the probability of uh, this. Uh, goes over uh, randomness in the parameter generation. So it doesn't exclude, let's say, uh, that if you fix X not in the language, then there exists some extremely unlikely parameter for which the proof system prover, for which the pro efficient prover that cheats exists. Okay, so you have an efficient prover which succeeds uh, if parameters align with this uh, bad statement in some lucky for the cheating prover way. If the number of such uh, parameters is negligible, then th this still goes through. But let's reverse wh what is picked when. And uh, as, as I was arguing, the real applications would be the parameter is chosen first, and perhaps statements are chosen adaptively by potentially malicious parties, given that the parameters were chosen. Now the existence of a prover of a cheating prover strategy that worked for some al badly aligned uh, bad statement and a reference string will actually now break uh, the scheme because let's say that given that that given parameters it's easy to find the badly aligned statements then the prover perhaps will uh, adjust his cheating so that uh, the cheating statements are those badly aligned ones for which uh, cheating worked. 
the fact that this was a universal quantifier, you know, might convince you that, oh, but this worked for all x's. So what do I care if the x is chosen after parameter? But the reason is here, as I was explaining. So uh, adaptive uh, soundness uh, would say the following. Uh, for every efficient uh, P star, uh, the probability that uh, uh, first uh, the parameters are chosen at random uh, by the PG. Uh, second, uh, the prover uh, P star on these parameters creates a statement and uh, some trapdoor. Um, and uh, what you are um, uh, checking the probability for, and you know, I want all of this to be negligible, is uh, two things, uh, uh, two events. First of all, uh, that the conversation uh, between the prover uh, uh, let's let's just uh, 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 a prover and uh, the verifier on uh, pi of x uh, outputs. We don't care for the prover and one for the verifier. And secondly, that x is not is not in the language. Okay, so we let the prover choose. The statement after seeing the reference string, and we say he wins if this statement is not in the language, but the verifier accepts. But there is some procedure that he follows uh, to get the verifier to accept. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Um, let's see the. Um, let's come back to the to the binding. Um, to to okay. Is this true uh, for this proof system? Okay. So that was uh, first of all uh, definition and um, and. Um, Uh, for uh, the uh, three round uh, argument, uh, zero knowledge uh, argument. Uh, this one. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, so assume um, uh, assume uh, cheating uh, uh, prover uh, p star, um, which uh, you know what? Let me go for for this 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 property, uh, uh, and 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 then let's see if uh, we can hike it up to this adaptive soundness, uh, 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 which makes, uh, which breaks uh, this statement. Okay. Uh, for this uh, for this scheme, and uh, uh, create a reduction R against. Uh, which um, uh, breaks uh, the uh, binding, which breaks binding uh, of uh, the commitments of the uh, trapdoor uh, commitment. Okay. Um, well, let's uh, uh, try to do that. So, what 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 does the reduction uh, get? 
uh, it gets the parameters. Uh, uh, what what game? What is the binding game of the trapdoor commitment scheme? The commitment is chosen at random by the by the generator, uh, and the reduction wants to output uh, a commitment and uh, two decommitments, right? Uh, the decommitment zero to message zero and um, uh, so the re reduction wants to output a commitment uh, the com and, and the commitment uh, of, of this one to message zero and the commitment uh, to message one. Okay. Uh, and we want um, uh, the messages to be unequal, but the uh, open uh, works on both, right? Uh, so this is one, and uh, so uh, this is one. Um, well, it has this cheating prover. Uh, let's give the same parameter uh, to the cheating prover because uh, uh, this is a parameter of the of the proof system. This is the CRS of the proof system. Uh, now, what did this prover do? So, uh, well, okay, maybe maybe it's, it's okay if the prover simply says, okay, here is the X uh, not in the language. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, assume X is not in the language. Okay, so um, or otherwise, uh, so okay, I adaptively uh, changed um, uh, to this property. Um, yeah, because if it's in in the language, then the break does not happen, right? So, uh, so let's just th think of uh, this case. Uh, then, okay, what is happening in the proof system? So, uh, apparently, he's sending some uh, commitment, and uh, and it is the case that if uh, C is chosen at random. Uh, from the uh, randomness space. Could you move okay. the page a bit? Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, because uh, we are arguing that the prover succeeds talking to an honest verifier. So let's first see what, what does a conversation with an honest verifier look like, right? So with an honest verifier, it's a challenge here uh, would be uh, chosen um, at random from the from the randomness space, and the prover would send uh, a response uh, decommitment, and that's supposed first message. Okay. And if we assume that uh, the verifier accepts with, uh, well, we assume that. This is broken. So, in other words, that we have we're dealing with the P star that gets an honest verifier to accept with non-negligible probability. So, uh, so apparently, the V algorithm. Uh, so apparently, there's two uh, two things all happening at once. First of all, open of the commitment. Uh, and uh, and this with this the commitment was correct. And secondly, the underlying Sigma protocol verifier uh, also accepted. Okay, sorry. Um, This is the proof system, and uh, this is the property that that uh, uh, 
uh, that the approval breaks. Okay. And uh, okay, so uh, what did, what what did the honest verifier do? Um, the honest verifier checked these two uh, checked these two things, and um, uh, uh, by mm, assumption. Uh, Let's call this uh, uh, event accept uh, on C. Okay. Uh, by assumption, uh, probability that uh, or uh, okay, mm, let's call this event accept uh, that accept happens is greater or equal to uh, some epsilon, uh, which is uh, not negligible. Okay, where the probability goes over, uh, this probability goes over uh, uh, randomness uh, of C. Uh, well, first of all, it goes over randomness of uh, pi, uh, and randomness of C and uh, and randomness of P star. Okay. Um, we need to uh, separate between uh, these two, uh, the top and the bottom. Because um, we, uh, throughout this reduction, we are stuck with this parameter. Uh, the reduction gets the parameter of the commitment as a challenge, and it cannot. Uh, it basically can only pass this, right? So, in a, if if you are want to reduce to the uh, binding of commitment, you are stuck with these uh, commitment parameters. But perhaps you can reuse this prover uh, several times uh, for these parameters. In which case, uh, you, if you run this experiment again with this prover on the same uh, parameters, uh, well, okay, actually, uh, we want to do this. Sorry. Uh, so, let's look at the space of randomness in this way. Here is the randomness in P and the randomness of the uh, cheating prover. And here is the randomness in the uh, challenge C. And somewhere here, there is a shape where this is the total universe, right, of uh, where these things are chosen from. And over the random sampling, there is a significant shape that is uh, for which uh, this succeeds. Uh, that's the property. OK. Uh, uh, yes, because the probability, that's what it goes for. Randomness here, randomness of the verifier, and randomness of the P star. Um, but it must be that there is a significant fraction over this dimension uh, that uh, for which there is a significant fraction of C's on which it succeeds. So once I fix uh, these to be to to hit uh, uh, that good fraction, and I do repeated uh, sampling 
uh, where the repetitions go over only uh, this part, this dimension, and these guys are fixed. Uh, then uh, the probability of this event um, is still uh, related to epsilon. Okay, let's uh, make it uh, more formal. Uh, that's called the splitting uh, lemma. Um, that um, let's call uh, this uh, x. Okay. Uh, that is a probability over all x and c uh, that uh, that some predicate uh, accept uh, on these uh, holes. And this predicate uh, happens with probability epsilon. Um, then uh, uh, there is a, a, a set a good X such that a probability over random axis that X is in this good X uh, set is at least half of epsilon. And the property of this good X set is such that, uh, so first of all, it is. And secondly, that, the pro that for every X in the good X set, let's just call it good. If I measure the probability of If I measure the probability over y's uh, that accept, uh, sorry, over c's, uh, that accept uh, xc uh, uh, holds, that's also uh, epsilon over 2. Um, You know what? Instead of uh, proving this lemma, because I don't have uh, much time left, uh, let me bracket this and say, uh, well, okay, assume assume this is the case. Uh, if you try to violate this, uh, uh, you see, if this shape is a nice square, then, um, then it's clear that if this shape is a, is a significant fraction of the whole universe, then there must be a significant fraction of along this dimension, such that for anybody in here, if you fix it, then in range over this dimension, you still hit the shape with non negligible probability. What would violate this? Well, a shape that is somehow very thin and uh, perhaps, you know, perhaps a shape that looks kind of like this. So for a many of axes, this is negligible. So if you fix anywhere here, this would be negligible. But then if you fix, uh, but there must be a region that is fat enough that if you sample here, you are with uh, non negligible probability inside of this shape. Basically, there's no way to sh fix this shape to violate this. Uh, because that's what it says. Like, there, there must be a region fat enough for, for, for this height to be uh, more than a negligible. Okay. Uh, now, why do we do this this way? Okay, so 
uh, so now if this happens with so by splitting lemma Um, if uh, pi and uh, randomness of p star are fixed and uh, belong to the good uh, subset of randomness, right? So um, the good ones are, are 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 these given by the splitting lemma. So there is enough fraction of random pies and randomness of the prover of the cheating prover, for which the following argument will work. Uh, uh, then uh, the probability of the accept event, where the probability goes over just random c's, is still non-negligible. Okay. Uh, 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 assume um, uh, holds uh, with probability epsilon. Okay, uh, and um, okay, and now you see maybe where this is going, because if uh, this with a fixed pi and a fixed randomness. Uh, of the prover, uh, I run uh, this uh, twice. So I sample C once and look at the ZDA. Now, probability that these ZDAs are correct in both senses is non negligible. Then, um, so let R run uh, P star on the same proof system uh, pr parameters and the same randomness uh, twice. Uh, let uh, uh, C prime, D prime, D prime, A prime uh, be transcript, be the second uh, transcript. Okay, uh, and now if this, uh, uh, okay, so now let's assume that the first execution fell into this uh, set. That's true with epsilon square probability. And that the second also uh, hit here. That's true with epsilon uh, two uh, half probability. We will unfortunately have to multiply these two probabilities, right, for the both, to hold, this will give us epsilon square, so not tight relation, but still. Uh, so now we have, uh, okay, now by, by the, um, uh, by the uh, uh, strong soundness, of the proof system uh, uh, here. If you, uh, uh, so now let's just consider two cases. Uh, case one, uh, sorry, I, uh, I'm trying to squeeze it too much on, on a single uh, piece of paper, I know. So uh, case one, a is um, equal to A prime. Uh, and um, uh, that case, uh, is, um, so, okay, so first, uh, okay, so this is the second transcript. Uh, with probability epsilon to square, both correct, and uh, the two challenges are different. Okay, uh, so this is epsilon to square, 
uh, uh, minus uh, one over the randomness space, right? Because uh, with a probability one over R uh, in the two executions, C and C prime are the same, okay? But uh, that's a negligible event. Okay, so let's go. So with a non negligible probability, both of these transcripts satisfy this, and the challenges are different. Now, this case where A was uh, the same, A and A prime were the same, is impossible by this case, right? Because it's impossible that for two different challenges, uh, the verification, this part of the equation, was satisfied if X was not in the language. Okay, so this case is uh, is discounted by uh, impossible uh, by uh, sigma protocol soundness, right? Um, and uh, uh, there is a case two, A is not equal to A prime. And um, what is happening there, right? So, uh, and and that uh, implies, uh, okay, <laughs> my, uh, I think the limits of how much I can uh, put on a single piece of paper are, are you know, are reached. Uh, but uh, let me just write <laughs> break in uh, binding. Right. Uh, so, if uh, in the two executions, A prime and A are different, uh, then you have explicit uh, break in binding, right? Because uh, uh, this is uh, mm, the reduction uh, will choose. Uh, this to be uh, DA, and it would choose uh, these two to be uh, D prime, A prime, and it would just forward uh, the uh, commitment here. Yes? Uh, so the case where, uh, because both of these equations, uh, verification equations hold, the C, the commitment, the proof of sense is the same. Why? Because in both of these executions, we ran uh, the prover on fixed pi and fixed randomness, local randomness. So uh, this commitment must be the same in both executions. Yes. Uh, so the case two of the opening in one execution was different from the opening in the other is is the break in um, in commitment uh, binding and just to reiterate the other case of a and a prime uh, being the same uh, that's the that implies that x must have been in the language okay uh, sorry for this incredibly uh, you know, sketchy stuff here, but okay. I hope this. Okay, so, uh, case case two happens with what probability? Or case uh, one? Well, case one is impossible. Right, but our, our x is already not in L, right? Exactly. So case one. Uh, okay. So rather, perhaps a better way to say it would be that. Case one implies that X is in L, and therefore oh, uh, oh. that type of attacker, uh, you know, uh, does not break, mm -hmm. I know, does I, not I break this property, right? Because he has yeah. to output X, which is not in L. Mm -hmm. So case one just won't happen. So case one, impl yes, like uh, if you are assuming that uh, with probability epsilon, this holds. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we are not in case one. Okay. Okay. Uh, so therefore, we must be in case two. But in case two, 
uh, you breaking the uh, binding property uh, explicitly. Um, uh, sorry that I took a detour here, but it is kind of not a detour. This is a, a It only works because uh, in a uh, security property as stated, randomness holds over several elements, right? The so randomness in the reference string, randomness of the prover, and then randomness of basically the verifier. And it is important to see that if something holds, holds over such complicated space, then it must also hold with a non negative property. You choose these first, and then you fix them, and you repeat the argument over and over, uh, where part of the randomness is chosen, is fixed, others is still variable. And why is that good to do? Uh, because in particular, that's the only way that we can consider different executions where some important parts of the of these executions are fixed. And that's, in this case, the commitment sent by this cheating prover. That part is now fixed throughout these repeated executions. And that is essential, right? Because otherwise, some good stuff happening over these executions would not imply breaking the binding property of a commitment where, right, the commitment is fixed and you are trying to correlate good stuff, good from the prover's point of view happening, right, like a cheating, uh, che success, che cheating success to two different ways of opening this fixed commitment. Um, okay. We'll see more cases of, of uh, you know where where where, 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 where this uh, is uh, a, a essential. Okay. Um, so far, so good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And 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 sorry for trying to squeeze it. Uh, uh, should just make it more sparse. You know, in a normal classroom uh, environment, the thing is that you have, you write on one board and then you write on the other and you mm -hmm. can still see the definition on the first board. Right. right. Yeah, but I think it's readable. readable. Okay. Great. All right. Okay. See you next week. See ya. <laughs>